everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm making a custom soap loaf for someone, and uh, I asked the question, what kind of fragrance and all that, and it was kind of up to me, so I said, you know, what, do you like a fruity, do you like floral, do you like uh, perfumey, whatever, and it seemed like it was a toss-up between fruity and floral, so I actually remembered that I made a soap before with apricot freesia from Brambleberry, and I really liked that soap. And so it's actually a good pairing of uh, fruity and floral. The, the fragrances match really nicely, so I think um, they'll really like that. And at the same time, I wanted to make a soap that had orange and pinks in it, so this was perfect. So I'm gonna show you what I did to those colors because although I like orange and pinks together, I also like to add a special color, uh, not a special color, but you know, something that's unexpected to make it a little bit more unique. So I put two different colors in there to kind of make it unique, and I'm gonna to talk to you about that in the color tutorial. And uh, let's get started right away. Okay, I thought I'd show you how I developed the colors for this one. First of all, the image that I had in my head was to have a sort of red magenta-like color. So I'll show you how I mix that up with my watercolors. By the way, if you've never seen these uh, color tutorials before, I don't color the soaps with these watercolors, but this gives me some paints to play with um, to see what I'm going to get before I use the micas, and the micas tend to be more expensive, so this is an inexpensive way to play out your colors before you start. So I like this um, magenta color, taking the inspiration from freesias. If you've never smelled a freesia, they smell really kind of sweet and peppery and uh, to just a really nice smell and they're beautiful flowers too so I'm going to use this um, red magenta a little bit of white in it um, and what I picture is it paired with the orange and there are orange freesias so the orange also symbolizes the apricot so that's the only thing I really had in mind and I also had um, white in mind so I'll put that in there got too much orange on my brush still let's blot that out to clean my brush properly so I'm gonna have a white to make things stand out and then um, I definitely wanted a little more pizzazz in this one and I was willing to work with a lot more colors. So I decided that I wanted a, a deep kind of purplish blue in there as well to be one of the dark accent colors. Let's put that over here. Somewhat like that. I also have this beautiful color called Passionata, and it's a it's a rusty, it's a reddish brown. I'm trying to simulate that. Pretty much like this. I'm gonna put this. Let's scoot this down and put this over here next to my other dark accent color. So I thought I'd use that in a very limited way so that I don't distract too much from the namesake colors, the fuchsia and the apricot. Just for a little punch there. So that's my um, color scheme there. And basically everything but the purple is in the warm range and that purplish blue serves as a one standout color. I think that's an interesting way to build a color scheme um, and I really mean interesting is if you keep everything warm and safe um, it doesn't give you that wow factor so adding this purple um, is the unexpected color in there 
and I'm only using a little bit of both of the dark colors in this um, in the soap. So I hope to do a drop swirl in this and see how it goes. So let's get on with the soap making. Okay, I'm going to blend today at about 80 degrees. Let's get the lye solution in there. Okay, that's all emulsified. Now let's get the colors going. I want deep colors for this, except for my base, which is going to be white. I want the colors of freesia flowers, which are pastels, pastel purples and pinks, and orange to represent the apricot. And then more of a deep wine-like red color for punch, and a deeper purple. Just a little of that. And a little touch of this really fluorescent pink. And the rest is going to be white. So there's really not that much white, even though I'm considering it the base. Stir that white in first. Okay, I'm going to blend that last because there's not much of it. I'm going to start with this pink. And I'm actually going to add the fragrance before I do any more blending. I've used this before. Okay. Oh, that smells exactly what you would think a mix of apricot and freesia flowers would smell like. Nice purple. And my fluorescent pink. I put a little white in that pink to tame it a little bit. It's blind your eyes. But I wanted something bright. Okay, I can stir things a bit. The fragrance says that it is not a pure white, but uh, it makes the batter a bit more on the ivory side, and I'm okay with that. I think this didn't get blended. So my white ended up rising a little bit, so I'm just gonna blend that some more. I think that's fine. I just need to get the bubbles out now. Yeah. 
Actually, it's still quite raced. So this is a slight change of plans and I think I know what happened. I think I added a little bit too much of the fragrance to the white part. So I'm going to combine this pink that's setting up pretty well and it's just going to have to become a light pink as my base. And that'll work. And I think it did. That's much better. I noticed that when I was pouring the fragrance in that there was a little bit more in that cup than I thought and I put it into the bigger container as you would probably do because it holds more batter usually. So these are still pourable but thickening up so let me just give those a nice quick stir. this pink in there. And it's still loose enough to get a nice thin drop pour. I really like pink and oranges together. Let's get the rest of this pink in there. Actually, since that's my lightest color and I want some definition in my swirls, I'm going to pour that last. I don't have much of that orange, so I'm going to get this in there first. So this topping is more watery than the rest of the soap. So what I'm going to do is a spoon swirl 
and then I'm going to let it thicken up a little bit more and then I'm going to add my orange leftovers to give more of a punch to the top. Integrate that more. I'm going to stir up some of the bottom color. So this has been an exercise in knowing something about how the soap works and integrating it a bit more. And that purple and pink mix on top, along with that sangria which is a wine color, will be a great backdrop for this bright orange. I, I can squeeze a few more drops of this purple too. Okay, there's no more juice in that turn up, so I'm gonna stop and then chopstick swirl the colors into this design. And I'll get some more light on the top by getting some glitter up there. Okay, so here's my apricot and fuchsia cold process soap. That's okay, I couldn't wait to unmold this. It heated up a bit, so that'll help it to slip out a little easier. There we go. A lot of sparkle there. Let me get it in my cutter. I'm going to bevel two of the corners first. That way I won't have to do it for each individual bar. Those corners will already be done. Okay, let's get the cutter now. One more thing I did. Off camera, I looked at the top and I thought it needed a little bit more pizzazz, so I, I did a gold mica drizzle. So let's cut this. Take that piece off. That's pretty bold. <laughs> but I like all that detail. And the light pink did quite well, considering I had to fight with it a little bit as I made it. That's pretty intricate right in there. I miss the fact that I didn't get the bright white into it, but I have a lot of soap like that. So this is a little more unique and I'm glad to see that that pink doesn't fight with anything. This is a custom order. A little teardrop. What I think is unusual in a good way here is that the soap thickened a, a little bit more than I usually have it when I do a drop swirl like this, but I've got this really fine definition as if it was really fluid, but because it was a little thicker, the, the, the distinction between the colors is just really fine, sharp. I'm really happy about that. And I'm gonna thank you right now for 
watching again and subscribing. And uh, I've got another inspired by artists so coming up that I can't wait to do and can't wait to make the video on that. And uh, remember I have an Instagram account too where I take a lot of pictures that sometimes lead to a direct inspiration for a soap. And if it doesn't inspire me for a soap, it generally or used to inspire me for paintings that I'm trying to get back to doing. So thanks for watching again and we'll see you all again real soon. Bye everybody.